divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Maduram Maduri Vyopi Mangale Vyopi Mangala Maduram Maduri Vyopi Maduram Maduri Mangale Vyopi Mangala Mangale Vyopi Mangala Pavanam Pavone Vyopi Yes, 
Hare Krishna. This uh, very deep and most beautiful expression of love for the holy name uh, has no author. It's, it's an anonymous bhajan. But we can see that the personality who put it together understood the, what we say, the siddhanta of all teachings. That in this age of Kali, there is no other means for self-realization than chanting the holy names. No other means for protection from the material energy than to chant the holy names. There is no other means for success in any part of life than chanting the holy names. It's the greatest of all sacrifices, the best of all worship, the highest of all expressions of devotion. It's the essence of the essence of the scriptures. <coughs> Lord Brahma himself, who is known as the topmost personality within the universe, a great devotee of the Lord, so much so that he is called Aja, someone who is born directly from the body of the Lord. He's self-born. He glorifies the holy name by saying, after searching through all scriptures, all Vedic scriptures, one cannot find a more direct, sweet, and most natural process of self-realization than chanting these, heart, these 16 names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But the greatest of all, the most pathetic and most sad thing is expressed here in verse number six. Oh, what a sorrow, what a great sorrow. More painful than any other misery in the world. He's expressing his compassion for the fallen conditioned souls because they have been given the greatest of all gifts and yet they can't recognize it nor can they understand it, nor can they, as it says, Pallad Maharaj says, not by their own efforts, by a combination of efforts of themselves and others, can they actually understand the glories of Krishna's holy name. So here it is explained that more painful than any other misery in the world, mistaking it for a mere piece of glass, the people of the world have forgotten this jewel. <laughs> it's a jewel because it's Gupta. The word Gupta means hidden. Krishna speaks in the Bhagavad Gita. He says that this knowledge is secret, but yet he reveals it. He speaks the knowledge, but calls the, the knowledge Gupta or secret. And it's interesting that he why, what is he saying is that only when one gets the mercy of the Lord can they understand what I'm saying. And that mercy comes through the spiritual master. So Srila Prabhupada has said, my success in bringing this Hare Krishna movement to the Western world, or to the whole world, is that because I glorified Krishna's name, I spread the Sankirtan movement everywhere. And therefore from that we have so many devotees, so many temples, so many projects, but it's all based on, centered on, and developed from the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. In Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Hoite Hayasarva Jagat Nistara. In this age, Krishna has come in the form of his name. So here, this great soul is explaining what pain. It's so easily available, and there's no rules, there's no regulations, there's no restrictions. And it's the highest form of spiritual expression and can bring one to the highest form of spiritual realization, realizing our relationship with Krishna and Sri Brindav and Dham. But yet people, they don't want it. And even if they're given to it, they don't recognize it. They can't understand how, what it is. So therefore he's saying, how unfortunate. 
there's a word there's a word in Sanskrit is called duskritina. Duskritina means one who has misdirected intelligence. They have intelligence, but the intelligence is misdirected for the wrong thing. Therefore, although to have intelligence is a great benediction and a great asset, it's being used in the wrong way, and therefore it works against the person's best interests. So from that word duskritina, we say the word uh, a miser. A mi the word miser is somehow connected to that word duskritina. What is a miser? A miser is a person who has wealth but doesn't know how to use it. You know, like some people, they have a lot of money and they just pile it up in the bank and then they go every once in a while to see how much they have. <laughs> and then at one point they die and everybody else gets it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it means although they have something that can be used for the, the benefit of themselves and others, they don't know how to use it. So, therefore, that is called <coughs> unfortunate or misfortunate. When someone doesn't have something, that's considered to be unfortunate. But when, something, when someone has something valuable and doesn't use it, that's even more unfortunate. So this is what's been given. Lord Chaitanya's Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, who in the form of his own devotee is, is giving this whole world the chanting of the holy name. And he's saying, just take it. I see see Radha Gupi Balava Ki Jai. And he's saying, just take it. There's no rules, no regulations, no restrictions. Just chant. Prabhupada, there was a little cartoon that was given to Srila Prabhupada at one time. And it was an, an elderly man and his wife sitting together. And the wife was saying, chant, chant, chant. And the man was saying, can't, can't, can't. And Prabhupada said, he's taking so much effort to say can't, why doesn't he just say Krishna? <laughs> but he's so unfortunate. So, yeah, the tongue is meant to do two things, to vibrate and to taste. And to vibrate material sound vibration means to call, just like Prabhupada used the example, the frog, ka 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 He's calling, but what is he calling? The snake of death. If the frog was quiet, the snake wouldn't find the frog, the, the crow, I mean the frog. But at the same time, because he's making this noise, he's revealing his whereabouts, and therefore he's calling death. So, to use the tongue in the best possible way means to, to glorify the Lord. And then that same tongue, which could cause one to go deeper into the material consciousness and material entanglement, is a way to elevate one's consciousness to the highest supreme position. So the gift is there. <coughs> Prabhupada, sometimes someone would come up to Prabhupada, 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 please give me your mercy. And Prabhupada said, I'm giving it, just take it. <laughs> just take it. So what is he saying here? It's available, but still no one is taking it. And nobody really appreciates the gift. And therefore, being a compassionate Vaishnava, he's feeling pain at heart. Because to see the sufferings of others means that one is also feeling how unfortunate these persons are. And therefore, he takes on that, he empathizes. But at the same time, he's thinking how to overcome or how to relieve the suffering of others. So they're always making plans how to distribute the Lord's mercy to any to everyone and anyone. So sometimes we think, oh yes, chanting the holy names, that's nice, but there are so many other things to do. But that may be true, but life is meant for self-realization. That is the only purpose of life, and whatever else we do in life may be important in order to keep the body 
and mind active or working, but it's not the goal. The goal is to realize God. The goal is to know God, the goal of God. The goal, the goal is to somehow develop love for God. And that's the platform of happiness. Susukam kartam avyayam. As Krishna says in Gita, this process is joyful. And that's why Srila Prabhupada would say, chant and be happy. He wasn't using just some glib or some trite statement just to sound what we say very nice. He was saying, if you want to find happiness, here's where you can find it. Just chant Kari Krishna. And make that the most important thing of the day. And as we take time to chant the holy names of the Lord, we'll find that there's always time for everything else. <laughs> I remember I had one disciple, she was going for her PhD, and her uh, schoolwork was piling up, so she decided to reduce her rounds from 16 to 10. And I told her, she wrote me a letter asking me what I thought, I said, no, don't do it. Keep your 16 rounds up, and then you'll find that if you just organize your day, where you can chant your rounds as early as possible, and she, she listened, and not only was she chanting 60, she was chanting 17 rounds every day, and she was able to work, do her schoolwork nicely and get a nice grade. So there's always time for the holy name. <laughs> In fact, the holy name is time itself. So when we chant the holy name, as Krishna says, time I am. So Krishna, time, the holy name is all the same thing. So if you want more time in life, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and the more you chant Hare Krishna, the more time you'll have to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and do other things too. So so this, this gem is not a small thing. The word here is ratna. Ratna means jewel. A jewel, there's many valuable stones. But a jewel is considered the most valuable. So this is the jewel of all spiritual activities, is to chant Hare Krishna. Some people think the name Krishna is five letters, K-R-S-N-A. And others think the name of Krishna is a representative of Krishna. But ultimately, the Shastras say, and they realize by the great said that Krishna's name is Krishna. No difference. The nature of the Absolute is that it's not in relationship to anything. It is the essence of what it's being expressed. Krishna and his name are the same. <laughs> so we can s associate with Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And he goes on to say, it should be heard again and again with one's ears. It should be uttered over and over with one's voice. It should, sh should be perpetually sung and sung an anew. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. It's not a fanatical statement. <laughs> Krishna is everything, and Krishna has made himself available to everyone in this age in his name. <laughs> So chant the holy names of the Lord and be happy. <laughs> and we'll find that life has meaning again. Sometimes people come and they have problems and we discuss the problem. We find out sometimes the problem is, is that they're not chanting or they're not taking sufficient time to chant. Or they're actually going through their rounds just to get their rounds done so they can do other things which are more important. It's the nature of the mode of passion to see success in life on, on what you accomplish. How much can I do? And that equals success in life. How much money I can make, how many activities I can perform successfully. In other words, we see success by results. And therefore, we're thinking the holy name is actually something different. But actually, the, the results you get from the holy name is the purification of heart. 
the awakening of the association of Krishna and the the diminishing of the effects of the material energy. So there's a lot happening when you're chanting. <laughs> a lot. It's not just some ritual or some responsibility I have or some way to somehow utilize my time when I have nothing to do. Sometimes we hear that people who are born in India, we ask them to chant. They think this is for my grandmother used to do that when she was old and she could, couldn't do anything else. So, but that's some concoction. The holy name should be taught to someone even before they're out of the womb. When the mother is pregnant, she can hear the sound of the holy name, the child will also benefit. So that's the time you start chanting, when you, before you get out. <laughs> and then life will be, what we say, centered around Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And he ends, he said, it makes, referring to the holy name, the universe seem insignificant as a blade of grass. It splendorously reigns supreme over all. It is full of eternal conscious divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. So he's just mentioning a few of the glories of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Srila Haridas Thakurn, the Namachari of the Holy Name, he, he chanted 333,333 names every day, without fail, as a vow, which is about 192 rounds of the beads. And Prabhupada said one cannot imitate Srila Haridas Thakur. He's chanting on the platform of pure devotion. He's absorbed. He's on the liberated stage. But what what is he teaching? That he was teaching us that this this is the, the process in this age. To chant the holy names. Lord Chaitanya empowered Haridas Thakur to teach the glories of the holy name. And he chanted Silently, 100,000, softly, the same amount, and very loudly. So he chanted in three different ways, just to benedict all kinds of living entities. So the holy name is Krishna himself. And the more we hear about it, Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially Adi Lila chapter 7 is full of the glories of the chanting of the holy name, the heart, especially Kirtan. Kirtan, Japa, both together supports each other. So take time and chant Hare Krishna. And I would say, make that the most earliest thing you do. When you first get up, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Welcome Krishna into your day into your life, the first thing you do. When you wake up in the morning, you say, Hare Krishna! And you can expect the day will be auspicious. <laughs> in other words, you're associating with Krishna at the first moment of the day. So, yes, the in the universe, with all its manifestations, is insignificant. Nobody notices a blade of grass. We walk by it. We walk by so many blades of grass. We walk on the blades of grass. So the blade of grass is insignificant. He compares the universe as a blade of grass compared to Krishna's name. It reigns supreme over all, splendorous. Not only reigns, but reigns splendorous. It's, it cannot be compared to anything. There's no comparison to Krishna's name. And so, you know why it's so hard to believe that? Because it's so simple. How is it possible that such a simple thing as chanting a mantra could be so glorious and so powerful? But that's called the inconceivable nature of God. <laughs> God, one of the Lord's main qualities is that 
He's inconceivable. He's a chitta. He's he's a hoaxer. He's beyond the range of the senses. He's a chintya. He's infallible. He's uh, what is that verse? Manariya manantarupam adyam puranam purusho nava yovanam jan vedesha dorlam abba dorlam atma bhakto govindam mari purusham tamaham jami. That wasn't the verse, but that was a nice verse anyway. Yata Sri Krishna Namari Anaba Vedrayam Indriya Seva Moki Jivado Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I just couldn't think of a purport to that verse, so I had to go back to this one. <laughs> so it's Atta uh, Sri Krishna Namari. It's one can't reach the Supreme Lord. He's beyond the range of the senses. Vayam <laughs> Indriya. Seva Mukhi Jivado. Jivado means tongue. But somehow by the process of using the tongue, one can access the association of God. You, By the use of the tongue, which is just a very simple but very prominent part of the body, one can, one can come in contact with, with God. Not through the intelligence, not through the mind, not through the imagination, but through the tongue, simply by chanting Krishna's name. So, we want to please Krishna, and here's the way to please Krishna, chant his holy name. When Krishna is pleased, everything becomes auspicious. Maharaj, would you like to speak also? Something on the holy name. I don't either. Thank you. 
Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare
Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Singapore, 
Tu veux une équipe Tu veux une Dwani's birthday, December 10th. <laughs> it was two days ago. It's all long gone. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> so, nothing to celebrate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh huh. <laughs> is that two cakes or is that one cake? Oh, that's a flower cake? Yeah. <laughs> that's just flowers? Just flowers. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> so I don't, I guess I don't cut the flower cake. <laughs> <laughs> what's, holding, what's holding the flowers together? <laughs> Thank you very much for your card, for your kindness and for your blessings and uh, I will be very happy if you are all happy in Krishna consciousness that will make me very happy and if you chant Hare Krishna enthusiastically that will also make me very happy <coughs> how am I supposed to cut this <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay. No. Somebody has to instruct me. What's the process, the science? How do you cut? I'm not going to cut wedges because that'll be huge pieces. Uh -huh. Triangle? Are you serious? Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, whoever made the cake can take over. Know the science of cutting and just and just of this cake at tasting. Unless you taste it, it doesn't become prasadam. It's already prasadam, it better be already prasadam before I taste it. Pineapple. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. I'm glad nobody asked me how old I am. <laughs> huh? I'm 36. <laughs> Dad.
That's what that's what Madame Gopal wrote on Lacardi gave me last night. <laughs> what year did I join? That's the year I took birth, right? I took birth actually in 1974. No, is it? Yes, 38. 38. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.